Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about rolling my eyes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, what makes you roll your eyes? Well, I'm going to go with when a manager convinces me that I am wrong about my estimate. That's going to be my favorite one. Because I, I, I just, at this point I kind of go, yeah, you're probably right. You seem qualified enough to tell me my business. I'm sure that you are not in any way trying to get the answer out of me that will make your boss happy so that you don't have to deal with the fact that you set the expectations incorrectly. I'm sure this is just you really trying to be a good manager and do what's right for the company. This happens all the time. I don't know how many times I've seen it. It's either through because of egos or it's because of poor planning, and somehow so you, somehow you developers, you, we developers, we, we always end up holding the bag. I love that. I absolutely love that. So you talk to your customer, and you're not smart enough to figure out that you should go and talk to the developers before you say yes to their request, and now you gave us a timeline that we can't hold. Well, do you really get to your? Oh my, guys, I think that you're going to have to do overtime. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It feels so great to be part of a team. And this, guys, I, c I can only, as I said, I just roll my eyes and I go, oh, here we go again. Uh, the thing that is really nice, though, and this is what, uh, this is the best medicine, get really fucking good at what you do. Like, really good. Such, so good that people actually both see that you're good, at the, like the people can actually evaluate that you're good, and then get good at making sure that people know that you're really, really good. Because if you get to that point, you can kind of just go, no, actually, I have to go home now. Oh, but, uh, but my customer or this client that I'm working with, they're gonna, like, they were expecting this now. Well, then you're probably going to have to call them. Because uh, uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to be, I, even if I work overtime, I'm not going to be able to do this. Uh, doesn't really matter. You should have talked to me before you you made assumptions about my work. They don't really like to hear that. And they will kick up a big fit about it if they can. They will not do it. And they won't be able to crush you if they know that they've, like, if they know that you are really, really good at what you do. And they they're in the wrong. There's not much they're going to be able to do. They might be able to go and they they will, in some cases they will they will go to your manager or whoever is in charge and say oh and like explain the situation and then they might come and talk to me again and say, well, but are you sure? Like it's nothing we can do. Can we discope things? And I kind of go, yeah, uh, we can. And then I roll my ass again. Of course we can discope things. And now you gave them now they now there's a ray of light shining on their bleak situation. And what they will do next is that they will go, oh, okay, cool, well, what can we do? Can we do a partial or tactical? Can we do something hacky and so forth? Oh, yes, thank you, yes, of course we can. Of course we can do all of these things. And you already know that this thing that's happening right here, right now, will end with you making them happy right here, right now. And then in six months, they're going to think that the system is shit and that you're a bad developer because the thing is always broken and why are you working here and all this other bullshit that comes with people being so incapable of seeing the correlation between I just forced a professional developer to break good practices and do something really shitty for now and... I can't see the correlation between the system getting worse and that thing happening not once, not twice, not thrice, but many, 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 many times. The, it's a very convenient... I don't know if I'm just not in on the, on, the, on the joke, because it seems very convenient that whenever anything comes up, your stakeholders will forget that this was a problem in the first place. Because everything is just a big magical box, right? Input request to developer. If they don't give you the response that you want, 
tell them to do it quicker or tell them to hack it together or like uh, try to bend them or their arm in some way they warn you you ignore warning and then a little while later the system seems to be really poorly performing for some reason I don't know why it must be those fucking developers they don't know what they're doing and uh, and uh, this never goes away. Every time I start, every single time, I've had it just the... I haven't... it was not that long ago. I happened the other... Uh, hap actually happened the other day. Uh, they asked us, can... Like, uh, they came in with a completely out of the blue fucking request. It came from absolutely nowhere. Oh, we just realized that we have not foreseen this and this and that. We need to build this really, really quickly. And I go, uh, well... Uh, that's not going to be a good idea because we ba basically what you're asking us to do is to create a high stakes feature in way too short of a time. If we hack this together, it's going to cripple the company for many years to come. And the first thing that I get back is, I don't agree. And I go, okay, you don't agree. You're a analyst and an administrator can you please bestow upon me your vast understanding of software engineering, infrastructure, and uh, site reliability engineering, and regression testing, and all this? Like, can you please share this knowledge with me so I can understand why do you don't think that this might be a problem? When I understand it, my coworker understands it, and everybody in the engineering department understands it. And then you kind of just remember that, oh, I'm so sorry, this will look bad for you to your manager. I'm sorry, I forgot, or to your customer. The problem is that uh, the reality that uh, you can't give the answer that you want, and therefore now we need to give you the answer that you want. And it doesn't really matter if that decision is going to be a stressed one, which is going to end with you being happy right here, right now, because you're too dumb, you're too uninformed to understand what the impact of what you actually just, what you just, what just has go, what's going to happen actually is. What's going to happen is that we're going to rush this thing, and it is a, as I like to call it, it's a backbone feature. And once that's shipped, you're going to come the day after delivery and say we have another customer now who needs this thing very quickly as well and now we need to continue working on it and since the first thing was a hack the second thing needs to be a hack as well because now you believe because you've, it's just working right you just clicked away the error message on your computer the computer is still fine right just continue and you're going to continue that process until the pro you, you into, until the bugs and the flakiness of that system and the development cycle grinds to a fucking halt. And what the best part, do you know what the best part about this is? The best part is that it's going to be the developer's fault. Because nobody's going to blame the manager who put in the unreasonable request and created a situation where we had to do this. Nobody's going to look at you because you clearly cannot have had any impact on the decision making process that led up to this situation. Because, I mean, you're not the one who's typing away, are you? So, what I want you to take away from this is that the thing that makes me roll my eyes the most is when a uh, manager tells me that uh, I'm wrong about my estimate. Uh, that makes me roll my eyes. I just go, okay, here we go again. Let's uh, cripple this company even a little bit further. Because that's the beautiful part, right? Uh, how will you know how well something can work when you never actually allow the people who know how to make it work do their job the way they were trained to do it? Because, you I mean, clearly you are the one who should be making these sorts of decisions. I wonder, I have this idea, maybe it is that software can actually be built in a sustainable and good working way. It's just that the humans that are involved may make it impossible. Maybe there would be a way to do it if we didn't have continue a continuous flow of people who seem to not have the ability to understand the correlation between quality and output. That's why we're all. Um, that's my my conspiracy theory. I believe that everything is uh, all our systems are shit because we 
we simply don't we can't look we can't evaluate accurately what it means to make really really bad decisions on really specific on important features i mean you won't you don't have to be a genius to figure out that it's probably a good a bad idea to put your uh, put your phone in a glass of water if we could get that mental picture and the significance of doing something like that into the brains of the people who like to tell us like to tell experienced developers that their estimates are wrong uh, that would probably end up with a lot a lot of benefits to the overall systems around the globe I think that this would be a very good change if we could get to that point why wouldn't you have a great day